Hi folks, welcome back to the Carver's Quick Shop. This is Arlene once again, and we're starting a new project today. It's going to be called a Praying Santa, okay? On his knees, and you can see the front here. He's on his knees and he's praying. Um, and this is the hobo look. I, everything I call hobo is without the eyes. Okay, so it's the hobo with the big nose and all. And then I did one looking upward with the eyes. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this one yet. I haven't determined if I'll put eyes in it or not. Um, I think I, I just might because it adds a little bit more to it, uh, to the video I think, uh, to have a little more instructions on how to do the eyes. Um, because we're working on the end piece, because he's looking straight up, um, a lot of carving is going to be done on the end grain. Okay. Um, that can be a little difficult and you really need to have a sharp knife before you start. The other thing you need to have is a, um, is a carver's glove and a thumb guard and this is a design I came up with on my own. Uh, you don't need anything but a block of wood if you look at it. Um, it's straight from a block but it's from not from the corner it's from the front like the front Santa that I did before and the morning Santa was done from the front this is also done from the front. So um, just take your time with it. Make sure you have your carver's glove on, your thumb guard on. I'm not wearing it because it's easier for me to teach without it. Um, and I highly recommend that you wear one. Especially if you're a beginner, um, you know, that choice is yours. I would highly recommend it. Um, the other thing is you need a piece of basswood. Um, I get mine from Wisconsin. If you email me, I'll tell you, uh, send you a link for that, uh, where to find it. Um, and uh, most of us carvers get it from the same location out there. Uh, they're a little higher in price, but they are excellent, excellent. It's excellent wood. I, I don't think you can beat, even though it seems a little higher, you're getting top quality uh, basswood from them. And I think it's high neck, high neck um, uh, woods out in Wisconsin. So. Um, if you're looking for a piece of wood, what you want to look for is um, a block that's one inch by one inch by three inches long. And this particular piece, um, I saved time on the video. I went ahead and cut this out with a bandsaw at the very end. So what you're going to do is you can take any size block that you want to use. And then if you want to make it bigger, just um, one way you could do it is just taking it to a copying machine and making it bigger than you'll have the right dimensions, the ratio as you go larger. Um, that's what I would recommend that you do. Or if you want to go to an inch and a half, you know, then uh, you want to multiply uh, the ratio of the length of it as well. But if you're going to do this size, it's three inches by one inch by one inch block. And then what you want to do on the end, I demonstrated on this one here, is you want to make a little curvature and cut off these corners. Okay. And once you do that, and you can cut it with a knife if you want. The other thing I do a lot of because we're cutting on the end grain for his face, because a lot of it, if you look at this is the piece of wood here, this is the end part. It's going to be very and uh, a very delicate area to a very tough area to uh, to carve because of it being on the end grain and one thing that you absolutely need to have is a super sharp knife uh, your knife have to be sharp to do this project um, I use a rough rider knife um, that's what I'm comfortable with if you're a beginner I would not recommend using a pocket knife use one of the stationary knives there's plenty of people on the web that sell uh, carving knives anywhere from $20 to $40, $45. Um, my blade is usually about, let me show you how long this is. Um, this blade is just, uh, just under an inch and a quarter from the actual working area that I work with. And um, I enjoy a pocket knife. It's just nice to be able to fold it and take it along with me. Um, this is a Barlow uh, knife. I don't ha particularly have this particular knife, but I have a couple of the other three blade knives that are also the same quality steel as what I'm using here. Um, this is a stainless steel Rockwell hardness of uh, 440. And if you don't have a knife, it's very important that you uh, purchase a knife that you're going to be comfortable with. 
like I said, if you're a beginner, you don't want to use something like this simply because it can fold on you. It's it's more of a dangerous way to carve. Um, and the other thing is make sure you have your glove on and your your thumb guard on and we'll start with this project. Now what you want to do after you round off your end it should look like this, okay, after you cut it off on either side. Because I use a pocket knife, I mean a, a, a bandsaw, what I want to do is go back and round this off just a tad more. And one solution I want to share with you before we continue because we're working on the end grain. I use a lot of the solution of half water, half rubbing alcohol, the 70% and mix it in a spray bottle and I will spray the ends lightly. It will soak into the wood much faster on the end piece than it will through the sides. And with that idea is you don't want to throw, my experience is if you throw it in a plastic bag and you keep it wet, when it goes to dry out, <coughs> excuse me, it goes to dry out, it's going to check everywhere. So you don't really want to do that. Um, you don't want to put it in a plastic bag. Just spray it as you're working on it. Um, you know, you can spray it a couple of times. My piece feels a little damp because it has been soaking in a little bit on the end, but you do run the chance of having it check on you. Now, I did both of these, and both of these have not checked on me at all. It's because I did it sparingly, and I didn't go, go overboard with spraying it. Okay, so what we want to do is the first things we want to mark are where the top is it should be a square all right and from that square we're going to run a line down about from the top of that one corner or that one curvature at the top we're going to draw a little line down and then take it down a little ways you can take it as far as you want but you've got to remember the hands have to come in here somewhere plus the knees okay the knees need to come in here so what we want to do is we just want to want to mark out where this part of the face okay this is the part we're marking out right now it's where to determine where the face is so when I come back we'll start on that right away